If you are searching for a 240Hz monitor, you've probably seen a lot of videos talking about these three monitors. The LG Ultra Gear 27 GN750, the ASUS Tough Gaming VG279QM, and the Acer Nitro XV273X, and for one main reason. Because there are some of the first IPS displays that have a 240Hz refresh rate that also have a 1ms greater gray response time, with the Acer monitor being the first to achieve this. And that sounds great. 240Hz finally has great viewing angles, color reproduction, and contrast ratios. There's even an overwhelming amount of positive reviews surrounding these monitors telling people like you and I why we should get one. So as an extremely competitive gamer who's always looking for new hardware to give me just that little bit of an extra edge, or color in this case, I was intrigued. I picked up the LG and the Asus from my local micro center and the Acer from Amazon and got to testing to see if any of these monitors were better than my current monitor, which is the BenQ Zowie XL2540, which you can learn more about here. In case you're not familiar with the XL2540, this monitor is the long acclaimed king of 240Hz gaming monitors, but it uses a TN panel. So that must mean that the Zowie is inferior to the Asus, LG, and Acer because color reproduction and viewing angles suck compared to IPS, right? Well, we'll get to that. I'm gonna break this down into sections. So if you wanna to skip to a certain part of the video, feel free. There will also be timestamps down below so you can click to whatever part you'd like to watch rather than having to scroll through the video. Lastly, before we get started, being that I'm mostly a one-man team with no researcher, writer, or editor, or anything, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Any kind of interaction supports the channel and the YouTube algorithm. This took me a long time to create. Anyway, let's see if these monitors can beat the king of 240 hertz. First is setup. The LG and Acer was simple. Take the monitor, stand, and base out of the box, attach the stand to the base, then mount the monitor onto the stand. No screwdriver required. The ASUS monitor was by far the easiest monitor setup I've seen in my entire life. Pull the monitor out of the box with the attached stand, attach the base and tighten it with your hand, and that's it. Literally took me seconds. In terms of ports, the ASUS has two HDMI 2.0 ports, a single display port 1.2, and an audio out jack. The LG has the same as the ASUS, but also a two port USB type A hub and a USB type B port to plug into your PC to make that hub useful. The Zowie has two HDMI 2.0 ports and a display port 1.2 as well, but also a DVI port, one headphone jack and two microphone jacks for whatever reason, and then a USB type B port to power the two port USB type A hub. Then we have the Acer, which is on a league of its own in terms of IO. The Acer includes your typical display port 1.2, and two HDMI 2.0 ports, but also a Type-B port to power the four freaking USB Type-A ports that are on the side and bottom of this monitor. This thing has as many USB ports as your work computer. Design-wise, the IPS monitors look very gamer-esque with the Zowie looking more industrial of the bunch. All of them are black and have red accents in one form or another. Both the Acer and the LG have extremely thin side and top vessels, but have huge chins. The Zowie and Asus have smaller chins but bigger side and top bezels, giving it a more symmetrical look. When it comes to build, the Zowie and Acer have the best materials. The Acer has nice high quality metal legs and the Zowie has a heavy black metal stand. The Asus and LG have plastic all around, but the LG in particular is looking extremely cheap with this terrible quality plastic for the red trim. Now let's talk about some of the attention to detail these manufacturers added to make daily usage with these monitors better. The Zowie, Asus, and Acer monitor have swivel, height, pivot, and tilt adjustments, and the LG almost has all of those, missing the swivel. All monitors have a matte finish and great anti-glare properties, so you don't really have to worry about your ceiling light or any other reflections unless you have a bright flashlight pointing at the monitor directly. One thing I really appreciate about the Zowie compared to the IPS monitors is that the Zowie includes a built-in carrying handle on its metal stand making it extremely easy to carry anywhere instead of awkwardly trying to figure out where you're gonna hold it from. The LG, Asus, and Acer don't have anything like that, but they also don't have the heft that the Zowie does. These monitors are much lighter than the Zowie. All monitors have 100 by 100 VESA mounting support, so you can mount these onto a monitor arm or a stand. The Acer, Asus, and Zowie have wire routing holes, so wiring looks less messy. This is non-existent on the LG. The Acer and LG have a headphone holder, but it's not in an ideal spot at all because if you put it on a monitor mount or up against a wall, you won't be able to use it. The Zowie, on the other hand, has its headphone holder in what I think is the logical spot, which is on the side, so you can use it in pretty much any situation. Next is on-screen displays or OSDs. 
Some people that want or even already have a high refresh rate monitor don't understand the point of having a good OSD or don't know why it matters. So let me explain why it does. When you're playing a game and want to see enemies easier, you'll want monitor settings that'll increase vibrance, at least in certain games, increase black levels to see enemies easier in darker spots, and maybe even have higher contrast and brightness. But what about when you're done playing games and you want to watch a movie or a YouTube video such as this one? You don't want everything to be extremely blown out with crazy white saturation, so you want a quick and easy way to switch between color profiles for your content consumption and gaming so you don't have to adjust everything every time you're done doing something different. When it comes to the IPS monitors, I wouldn't say that they're the worst, but they're far from great, especially for the Asus, but we'll get to that. The Acer has a pretty logically laid out menu, and I was able to figure out how to navigate through it pretty quickly. However, you can only adjust most of the menu settings on the top row of modes. If you use standard, eco, graphics, or HDR, most of the gamer-focused functions like overdrive, VRB, ultra low latency and such are locked. If you're on the top row though, everything is present. Also, when you change a setting, it saves automatically, which is a nice thing for me, but can be a problem for some. Next, we have the LG's OSD. You click on a nipple to activate the OSD and choose write for settings, then play around until you have your desired settings. Nothing different here compared to the Acer, just different button layout. Just like the Acer though, anything you change will be saved automatically. Then we have the Asus. Spoiler alert, it's trash. You have a nipple and three buttons, which you never know exactly which button you're pressing. There are labels, but if you crank up the brightness on the monitor, you can't even see them, even if you have a ceiling light on. It's not all bad for the Asus though. For the three buttons, one button is for exit and the other two are customizable to whatever you want like game plus, game visuals, brightness, contrast, HDR, volume, and such. Speaking of which, I strongly discourage anyone from using the built-in speakers on any of the monitors because they are horrendous. Anyway, my two shortcuts are set to game plus and game visuals. For game plus, you have things like a crosshair if what you're playing has no HUD or no crosshair. You have a timer, FPS counter, display alignment, and snapper mode, which is only present on the ASUS monitor. Snapper mode is a bit of an interesting one. You choose your zoom amount, you choose a crosshair, and it zooms in on the center of the monitor so you can see far away things closer. I actually found this to be extremely helpful, making my already great aim even better, helping me give out free haircuts just a little bit easier. Yeah, I know I'm tooting my own horn a little bit here, but I have to relay this message to you guys somehow. Then there's game visuals, which lets you choose one of the visual modes, but none of the ones you've customized yourself. If you want one of the customized ones you've made, you have to go to the nipple, to go to the my favorite tab, then customize settings, then whatever setting you saved it to, then load. This takes forever. Big miss here, Asus. Lastly, we have the golden standards of on-screen displays, the Zowie. The Zowie has what's called an S-Switch, which is included with their XL2540 and XL2546 and a couple other monitors. This allows you to easily access their logically laid out OSD, not only to adjust, but to save your presets to one of the three preset buttons on the bottom. If you watched my in-depth review on the XL2540, you'll remember me saying this. This is one of my favorite features about this monitor. It's one of those things where I thought it was a gimmick when it first came out, but after using it, I was like, why doesn't every other manufacturer have this? Anyway, the Zowie clearly has a better OSD compared to the LG, Acer, and Asus, and this does make that much of a difference in a day-to-day -day use when switching between content consumption and games. It saves a lot of time. Now, let's move on to the part we're all here for, the displays. All monitors are 240Hz 1080p displays, with the IPS monitors being 27 inches and the Zowie being 24 inches. The Asus is a special case here because it can be overclocked to 280Hz and is the only one to overclock at all. When it comes to size though, 27 inches is nice for content consumption, but 24 inches is the optimal size for competitive gaming since it lets you keep the entire game in your field of view. So if your main goal is to have as much of an edge as possible, you're going to want the Zowie. Pixel density on the IPS monitors isn't great, being that they're both 27 inches and 1080p. So you can make out individual pixels quite easily. If you're used to a 1080p display, you won't have an issue with this, but if you're used to a 2K or 4K display and you look at this, you'll probably die inside and wonder how people can deal with this. And obviously, because the Zowie is smaller at 24 inches, there's less pixelation. 
Now, let's talk about features a gaming monitor needs to include to help you become a better gamer. Less motion blur and a black equalizer. Motion blur is extremely good on all of these, being that they're 240 hertz. There isn't much trailing or ghosting on any of these monitors, however, if you look at the red part of the UFO, you can see that the Zowie is able to make out some of the dots, making it the clearest. With the ASUS, it looks more like multiple lines, and with the Acer and LG, it just looks like one straight line across the UFO. But again, I doubt you'll be complaining using any of these. The ASUS has an extreme low motion blur option, or ELMB, to further eliminate motion blur, and I gotta say, it actually works extremely well. It actually looks better than the Zowie, however, it comes with a massive trade-off. It has the screen brightness to about 170 nits, so you're probably never even gonna use this because you just can't see anything anyways. Next, there's the black equalizer. This part's gonna get pretty wild, so buckle up. All monitors have a good amount of adjustability for their black equalizer to increase shadows, making it easier for you to spot enemies in darker areas. Starting with the main screen of Rainbow Six Siege, both the ASUS and the Zowie have the best white saturation when on content consumption modes, meaning I've set the monitors on the best settings for consuming content, not for gaming. The brightness of the sun behind Oryx, which is the dude in frame that you're looking at, are well controlled on the ASUS with the Zowie doing a better job. When looking at the LG and Acer, they're already overexposed and I haven't even turned on their black equalizers yet. No matter what I did here, I wasn't able to get rid of the overexposure. Turning on the black equalizers to the max on the LG and Acer, as well as adjusting some other things to help me see enemies a little bit easier, you can see that the sun behind Oryx is just overpowering the entire image. Crazy overexposure. This is mostly fine with the ASUS, there is some overexposure, but nowhere near the LG and Acer. Quick note about the ASUS, there are five levels of adjustment. Level zero, which is none, level one, two, and three, and dynamic adjustment. Level three is the max I would recommend because if you use dynamic, the monitor goes from being edge lit to full array local dimming, and I guesstimate the grid to be around 17 by 15, and when you sit this close to a monitor and you see these halos popping up, it's super noticeable and distracting. Lastly is the Zowie, which produces the best results overall by increasing the black brightness, but not the whites. Okay, so what about a different game then? Let's try a game that's been sucking my life away every day for the past month, Escape from Tarkov. As you can see, we have the same results. With the Asus and Azawi, looking outside on a sunny day on Interchange, you can see that they look fine on content consumption mode, while the Acer and LG are already overexposed. Turn on the gamer settings though, and as you might have expected already, the Acer is brighter than the Asus and Zawi, and the LG is just the brightest, but not in a good way. Now, some of you may be thinking, okay, well, maybe this YouTuber just turned up the black equalizer a little too high, and he should just lower it down. Or, who cares about what the sky looks like? I bet this brightness means that shadows in dark areas are easier to see, right? Well, yes and no. No as in the Acer monitor can barely increase the brightness of dark areas, and yes as in the LG increases it much more than the Acer, but it does so while washing out the entire image, making it look grayscale. This is not an issue with the ASUS, where it gets brighter than the Acer, and less of an issue for the Zowie, where it just does relatively a fantastic job all around while keeping color. This isn't an issue in just games either. This is everywhere. If we look at Legom's white saturation test, the LG looks overexposed on content mode, and when you go to the gamer settings, it's almost a white screen. Everything from 244 onward is gone, and you can barely even see 200. With the Acer, it was similar to the LG on content mode, but it surprised me on gamer mode because it seemed like it did a better job in white saturation in games, but when it came to the Legom's test, it completely blew everything away. Again, the ASUS did a better job than the Acer and the LG being able to contain better whites on content mode, but started to look similar to the other IPS displays when it came to gamer mode. Now, I'm not entirely sure if these monitors are overexposing like crazy because of IPS glow, but regardless, the results are not that great. Lastly is the Zowie. The Zowie offered better results with both content mode and gamer mode, never overexposing the whites, but making it just a little easier to see the black squares. One thing you should keep in mind with all these tests I just showed you, it'll be difficult for me to capture it on camera exactly how I see it, but it isn't too far off. Now, what about when it comes to consuming content? Well, with the IPS displays being IPS, naturally, they're nice to watch content on. However, so is the Zowie. The LG and Asus support HDR10, not HDR10+. I don't want you to confuse the two. If you're not familiar, HDR10 is a static form of HDR, meaning you'll get better highlights, and a much wider color range than SDR, or standard dynamic range. 
but not as good as HDR10 Plus or Dolby Vision, where metadata is used so your display can adjust its brightness and color on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. The Acer, on the other hand, has HDR400. I tried looking everywhere to find out the difference between HDR10 and HDR400, and I couldn't find anything other than that HDR400 is frowned upon apparently and is technically a subcategory of the HDR10 standard. So if anybody could clarify in the comments, I'd appreciate it and maybe some other viewers can understand the difference because of you. Regardless, all of these monitors get pretty bright and have good contrast ratio, being able to support a nice wide color range. However, being that the Zowie is a TN panel, it's able to produce deeper blacks than the IPS monitors. Whichever monitor you end up going with though, I doubt you're going to be complaining because they all look pretty good when consuming content. But are they the best monitors to consume content on? Definitely not. If you want an amazing viewing experience, you want a higher quality IPS panel, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Lastly, we have viewing angles. The IPS displays are obviously impressive, maintaining great color accuracy throughout every angle. While the Zowie does a decent job from the side, doing great on the top, and doing terrible on the bottom. Though, that's not really an issue because I don't know who the hell is looking at a monitor from the bottom. So if you have the Zowie and have someone hovering over your shoulder to watch something, they'll be able to see everything pretty clearly. So in conclusion, which monitor should you get, and do I think that these IPS 240Hz monitors can compete, and overthrow the king of 240Hz? Well, this really depends on who you are. If you're buying a monitor with the sole or main purpose to watch movies and videos all day or do professional color work, these aren't the monitor for you. You should get a much higher quality IPS panel that has some form of high refresh rate. Don't get me wrong, these IPS monitors are great, but they were made and advertised to do one thing and one thing only. Be a 240Hz IPS monitor while offering super fast response times and it does deliver. I noticed zero difference in response times compared to the Zowie. However, with that said, these are not high quality IPS panels in a color reproduction sense. The only difference you're gonna be getting between the IPS displays versus the Zowie is better viewing angles. You're not gonna be seeing a big difference in color reproduction between the IPS monitors and the Zowie's TN display because Zowie's panel is already really good and also provides a digital vibrance controller that does a really good job adding color where needed. Now, everything I just mentioned sounds pretty weird to some of you guys because as everyone already knows, IPS panels are the best for content creation or professional color work. And that's only true as long as you're buying a high quality IPS panel or if you're comparing these to a mediocre TN display. But trust me when I say, the difference between these IPS monitors and the Zowie are not as big as I thought it would be. If you're looking to buy the absolute best competitive monitor for crushing 13 year olds all day, you should definitely go with the Zowie. It offers better blur reduction tech, it has the best black equalizer of the bunch, and if you're constantly switching between games and content consumption, the S-Switch along with Zowie's OSD is a big thing you don't even know you're missing yet. Now, after writing the script and reading and reviewing and proofreading all of this, I sound like a total Zowie fanboy, but I'm not. I'm not loyal to any brand, no matter what product I'm buying. I just simply go for the best product, and I think the Zowie is the best one here. I wanted to like these three more than the Zowie. I've had mine for three years already, and I'm always looking for an excuse to get something better. After all, the Zowie was released at the end of 2016, so it's old and probably is on its way to being replaced by another Zowie monitor in the future. But even though it's much older, it's still the king of 240 hertz. Well guys, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike, and you're probably one of the owners of these monitors, that's fine. Comment, subscribe, any kind of interaction helps with the YouTube algorithm and helping me get noticed. And like I said, I did a lot of research and time making this video. But other than that, I hope you guys learned something and have a great day every day. Peace.